You are listening to another edition of the Bloody Legends with Jai, that Aussie metal guy, and Jim Taylor. Make sure you're a bloody legend and hit that like and subscribe. Hey, how you all going? It's Jai, that Aussie metal guy, and my awesome co-host, Jim Taylor. It is time for another edition of the Bloody Legends, the first in a couple of months. is with great present pleasure, as I get my words out there, Kerry Parsons and Stephen <laughs> Miller from Dark Remedy out of the US. Cheers for joining us, guys. Thanks for having Thanks us. For having Absolute bloody pleasure. Really enjoying the music. I know it's been quite a busy year for you guys. Can you tell me where this all began for Dark Remedy and yourselves? Ooh, yeah, it has been a busy year. We've um as you know, we've we've pushed four singles to radio so far this year. And uh we're not quite done yet, but uh this Dark Remedy really started back during the, the pandemic. Um Steven and I other projects going on they kind of hit the skids with covid and um steven recorded my my other band sinister x at the time and uh you know we've been working together for years and we always really clicked and you know we're like all my shows were canceled so we're like what are we gonna do with our with our time here you know let's be productive like why don't we start writing together so that's really how it started. It just started as like a COVID project that we didn't really know where it was going, if it was even going to be a band. And uh, last year, last October, we hooked up with Paul Crosby. And Paul was kind of like, you know, what do you guys want to do? And we're like, I don't know, man. We're just, we're just making music that we like. And uh, he's like, well, you know, I mean, y'all got some killer stuff you should do something with it what do y'all want to do i'm like all right well sky sky's the limit so that's kind of how we ended up here so that's fair amazing. to fair to say having um paul crosby kind of jump on board um make saliva their drummer great drummer as well kind of no injected doubt. a little bit of kind of ideas and for you guys as well kind of where you just wanted to go and enthusiasm yeah or yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that, you know, uh, we looked at ourselves as we were in a real fortunate position that we now have this vehicle, um, whereas, you know, a lot of other bands and looking back to, you know, even throughout my career, if you don't have the vehicle, you don't know what to do. You're kind of just, you know, doing your thing and then you may be moving forward, you may not, but we're like, man, we just got supercharged. <laughs> it's off to the races for us. Right. That's so Stephen, what was that period like for you when this kind of all started? Because you do, you got your recording studio as well. So you would have been working with a lot of bands in that time with COVID. How, how did it kind of affect you, man, and kind of going into this? Yeah, so um, 2020 was an interesting year for everybody. But for me in the studio, um, I had to very quickly pivot from doing a lot of tracking uh, as a, a tracking studio. And how do I shift that into mostly mixing and mastering? And so um, just trying to completely change up my whole business uh, was pretty stressful. Um, but also, um, so where I'm at um, in Virginia, I'm near Richmond. It's it's a big metal town. So I would go to live shows a lot and that's where I would meet people and, and find new clients and things like that. And so that was all gone too. So all of my kind of go-to things that I, I know I could rely on just kind of you know, just went out the window. So um, Carrie and I had to get creative and find something to keep ourselves occupied. And that ended up being just writing some songs. And uh, we released a few um, just out to our friends and stuff and, and showed them, hey, this is what we're doing. This is what we're up to. We, we would post some things like um, on YouTube or whatever. And then um, when we met Paul and got hooked up with him, it just kind of um, really changed the game and gave us another opportunity to kind of like, okay, well, if, if we could start over and do it, the way we feel like we should um maybe this is how we would do it now and it, it was kind of like a, a way to kind of kickstart things off again and um just put some new energy and life into what we were doing and now that uh you know we're a year into it um we've we've made a lot of progress uh we're uh totally ecstatic with the response we've gotten and um hope to see what happens next in 2024 
Yeah, well, Jim, you commented before. I'd, I'd like you to take this one. You were commenting on um, Stephen's vocals and the sound of yeah. the band as well. Yeah, and that's that uh, good. I was about to ask. I, I didn't know where you guys were based. I'm a Virginia boy too, man. I went to uh, Hampton Sydney College, but I, I, okay. I would, I was a competitive fencer, so okay. I would fence at VCU a lot. So yeah, that's, I'm, that's I'm really an hour cool down the street. Have. Awesome, brother. Oh, no, no we need to hook yeah. up. We got to go to the tobacco factory, man. <laughs> um, but uh, um, you guys reminded me, so, like, listening to the tracks, um, I, 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 I hate comparing other bands to other bands, and please don't take that the wrong way. But you guys reminded me of, um, well, let me ask you this first. Who who are y'all's influences? And then I'll tell you who I no, think you no. sounded like. No, my my biggest influence um on vocals is Devin Townsend, 100 percent Um I love the nice. theatrics, I love the energy, the emotion, like the depth of range he has. If I can even come close to what he's doing, I, I feel like I'm winning. So uh yes, he's he, he's kind of my shining star in, in this uh world of rock and metal that we found ourselves in. Beautiful. Beautiful carry you. I'm old school, man. Kiss, Sabbath, Metallica, stuff like that. But I mean, we're, we're both of us are really all over the place with music. I mean, when awesome. I was a kid, it was it was country and Bob Marley and stuff like that, and you know, Stephen Meatloaf, and I mean, we're we're literally all over the place. Yeah, we're we're both big uh, Prince fans and Meatloaf fans and Kiss and all that all that other stuff too. You know, so, so it's so like that, just, just that like big. Yes, the big wall of sound. If, if if it's massive, we're about it. So, what struck what struck me, and I I, I said this to Jai what, before you guys came on. I was like, man, they remind me of the big vocals of the Gothenburg metal scene, but in Scandinavia, like Dark Tranquility or uh, Soil Work or In Flames, because you had this heavy music. But these the these choruses and verses you, you could just sing right along to, and and the the depth of um your, your both of your uh your guitar work, oh my god! I was like this is this is incredible. So that that's where I was kind of going with that. But it was just everything everything was just catchy and hook laden. And that's and, and, and you know um uh well, the new single uh, uh the possession 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 talk about that a little bit if you, uh, uh that uh that was what two weeks I'm just ago gonna two, throw it out there two weeks ago. I, I, dude I I appreciate you saying that because how we started before now all you're gonna see out of us right now is the four songs that we've pushed since we've had you know major label distro and all that. We had to take sure. down all the the prior music. It will some of it will be re-uploaded at one point, but we started off as a as basically a prog metal band. And some yeah. currently some of our biggest influences are the Scandinavian bands. I mean, we're we're huge into to Ghost and you know Volbeat and Him and you Boy know Flame, I mean, like for sure. Like Anders, like you brought up like the like the Gothenburg guys, like Anders from In Flames. He he was. Definitely, I'm um, probably on my top. Of, like, I love that. my That's who you reminded me of, exactly. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Sounds of a Playground is still one of my favorite albums. So, oh yeah, yeah, definitely Absolutely. rooted in that melodic sound as well. You can hear that. That's exactly it. You guys as well. Yeah, yeah we I wanted to that. that when when we decided that we were going to do the the mainstream radio push in America, we knew that you know the sound had to evolve. But we wanted to keep that, you know, we 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 felt like we've started to develop this, you know, that big, wide sound um, and, you know, melody is super important to both of us. Uh, you know, the the big soaring choruses, just everything's exactly. got to be melodic, and, you know, that trying to figure out a way to to incorporate that in. American radio stuff was, you know, an interesting process that we evolved through, but uh, no glad to hear it resonated with you. Oh, it was immediate. It, it was immediate. It was like, 
uh, uh, for me, there was a record Dark Tranquility did. It was, uh, oh man, I, I can see the record, but they the, the, the main single was called Monochromatic Stains. And, um, and it really hit me. Like, I was like, I wonder if these guys listen to, you know, like, Children of Bodom in flames, uh, <laughs> Norther, you know, uh, Stone, all these guys. But it, it, clearly, you do. But you, you also have Damage that. Done. Da- thank you, my man. <laughs> Damage <laughs> done. That's the record. Uh, Damage done. That's exactly the record. And it, um, yeah, there were the, like you. It, all four songs have so much going on. Um, how, how long did it take you guys to compose all those? If, if, you know, this. Uh, it it varies from song to song. Um, okay. So for instance, for instance, "Haunted" was the first song we actually ever did as a group. We re-released it uh, with Paul uh, once we brought him on, but uh, that that song kind of developed over a number of years to get to where it was. Whereas um, "Blood Money." We literally came up with that in uh, like the initial idea over just a text chat, like Carrie came up with the line, I'll sell my soul and we'll, I'll buy it back later. And we're like, Hey, there's something there. So then I pull up my, that's acoustic. a rad lyric, by the way, too. I, I get out my acoustic and I turn, uh, I get on the phone. And I'm like, Hey, check out this chord progression. I think this works. And then, you know, 24 hours later, we had a demo in, in the computer and we were messing with it. So beautiful. It's such a killer track Beautiful. to see that Blood Money one. I just want to quickly jump in there. That got a fair bit, of, um, as you're talking radio play, that got a bit of coverage for the first track. He's kind of re-releasing officially as you guys pushing forward. Yeah, with the first song, yeah. you never really know how it's going to, um, you know, what the reaction is going to be, but we were just completely overwhelmed by uh, the reaction we got from it. Um, I'm sure Kerry can speak to that more. He he looks at the numbers more than I do, but it was just completely ridiculous how many people hit us up after that song. I I love the data, you know, because in 2023, we're not just musicians. And even though we have a manager, we still, you know, you you're it's a machine now. You've got to kind of wear all the hats and you don't really know sure. what's working if you're not watching the data on, you know, what's doing what. But uh, Blood Money definitely surprised us. Uh, we we kind of thought, you know, hey, we're this unknown band. We just wiped out our catalog, and this is our first release. It's going to be the only thing on Spotify. I'd be happy if we get in the top 50, period. And that song peaked at number 15, uh, which just blew our minds. Yeah, so what, what what's it like, like, as a band, like, I'm... Um you know, releasing music and kind of tailoring it for the Spotify, you know what I mean? Getting rid of your back catalogue, it would have been a kind of a nervy time and coming in with that first film clip as well over on YouTube because it kind of all ties in together now, doesn't it? It's all like digital for releases. Sure. And... Yep. Yeah, I mean, it was... Uh, we definitely had a lot of emotion about it because, you know, at the same time, we were proud of everything that we released, but you know, with the deal that we signed, it just it is what it is, had to be yeah. that way. So sure. kind of like we're erasing the history of the band here, but at the same time, it's exciting because this is like a rebirth. You yeah, know? showcasing the product That's and beautiful. kind of what you feel embody the band going forward as well, too. For yep. sure. And I think um, what did I say? Like over on YouTube was a hundred. 207,000 200... views, dude. There's 101 on the latest yeah. single possession, which we'll jump into, but 207,000 views in eight months, which isn't bad. I think half of them people need to bloody subscribe to it as well. Yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> I'll be honest. Part of our problem is is we... Social media is a tool in, 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 in you know, promoting and all that. It is something you have to do yes. that... Yeah. We are still grasping, getting used to that because Stephen and I are kind of the the quiet, mysterious. <laughs> we just we just drop music, you know, and and yes, the fanfare and all that is is kind of new to us. So we we haven't really pushed the subscribers. You know, I don't even know that we've ever made a post like, "Hey, go subscribe to our channel." You know, we're just 
kind of the whole self promotion thing is really really bloody hard even on my end i'm the same i feel same. Like kind of you, you just want to put your shit out there and put it but it's a little yeah. hard to self promote yourself and blow your own horn per well if you sometimes. want to don't force it yeah, yeah if, you're, if you feel like subscribe and hit the fucking like but it would be nice if half of you people did fucking subscribe to dark <laughs> remedy that's for sure right <laughs> yeah um, pretty much <laughs> so I'm just happy someone wants to do it. That's that's where I'm at with it. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people are bloody listening to it as well. And you did mention Haunted was kind of one of the first tracks you're working on for quite a while. It was the second mm. release of the band going forward. Tell us about a little more about that track. Um, so, so that song is just straight up about how hard um, COVID was for everybody. I mean, if you want to get like super literal about it, but um, the, the lyrics have a lot of, uh, you know, there's like a sense of, um, like sorrow and melancholy, but at the end, you know, we, we try to have like a, like an uplifting, you know, at the end, he's, I will not be haunted. This too shall pass. Right. Um, so, uh, so, you know, it was kind of one of those things that's like, you know, every, we're all kind of feeling down, like Carrie's depressed because he can't play live. And that's like what he loves to do. I'm depressed because I can't uh work on music the way i used to be able to like for the past 10 years like everything's shifted now and um i, I know yeah. all my friends musicians are going through the same thing and um you know just friends and family it's it, it just changed everyone's lives and i know in, in australia the the reaction to covid was you know pretty crazy too all over the world just everyone kind of went through this whole thing together and so um with haunted it's like you know, there's, there's a light at the end. Like we're going to get out of this. It's okay. So um, that's beautiful, man. That's cool. It's you. like a dark, it's a very, it's a, it's a cool, um, not to quote your band, dark remedy. Uh, it, it's a, it, 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 it's a uh, dark optimism. It's like, uh, 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 things are very, uh, dark right now, but there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I, I I see I I see uh, in your lyrics and all that the same dark positivity that's in uh, bands like Hatebreed, yeah. where it's like pull yourself up out of like shit's bad, but <laughs> you're gonna pull yourself up out of that. You're gonna be stronger and harder than a coffin nail at yeah. the end of it, and that's what I hear in your band. But it's like, exactly, if you're the kind of person that doesn't give up so easily uh, i think you, you're gonna find uh, something to relate to in our lyrics oh yeah thousand percent definitely dude i got that out of hornet as well even with my battle with cancer at the moment dude it's like i can Indeed. and i've been chatting about this a lot the last couple of weeks even down doing radiotherapy to the couple of the nurses and the doctors and that and they said you can see it with some people they come through and their hands are in their head they're dejected they've already given up you know and Whereas me, with this battle, every day I'm going through it, trying to be as positive as I can. I feel like that was the same with the track. doesn't matter how dark things are and you're haunted by things, you can still push forward and do positive things with your life. And try and make the best out of each and every day because we're all haunted by something. We've all got something going on with us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and uh, you know, the, um, the proof is in the pudding. Like, humanity is still here. We've been around for thousands of years. We're going to keep trucking, so let's just... Let's just keep moving forward, right? So keep trucking sure. while we're here, making that's making, right, making um sunshine while it's fucking something like that. There's a sound yeah, like yeah. that. <laughs> all the, yes. all the humans, right? You know, just uh, you know, things keep moving on. Gotta that's keep it. Going. And, and Carrie, yes, I sir. do um want to mention something too about you, like because um COVID not only affected you, but how did you go? You also have a little bit of a a part time gig as well as a wrestler, dude. I see somewhere, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, obviously none of that was happening during COVID. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's... Gotta wrestle uh, six feet apart. Yeah, that's that's something I enjoy doing. Um, I haven't been in the ring uh, as much this year as I would like to because we've been so busy with the band. But, you know, when you, you juggle multiple things, it's... Uh, you know, some something gets a little bit more during this time and the other, you know, it suffers a little bit, but it comes with the territory. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's a balancing act that we, we figure out. Yeah. And, um, also I think that was kind of like the first kind of track up there on YouTube was the same song. Was it for you, for you, for you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's, that's one of the only ones from pre us (laughs) signing with distro that we were able to keep because that was never, that was never sent to distro really in the first place. Cause it's, it's really only just used as my entrance music. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, let's jump into the next one there, now and ever. Oh, so good, so good. I, I, I sorry, but no, continue. Sorry, I had to fan for a while. <laughs> okay, for go a ahead. Uh, so that one was, you know, obviously that's the high energy banger song, right? Um, so for us, that was like kind of the spiritual successor to Blood Money. It's like, okay, Blood Money, it, yeah. it's, it's hype, it's driving. But now we need a song that's going to just kick your teeth in, right? And so um, as far as, uh, you know, what we were thinking, as far as what we wanted to convey, it's, um, you know, with, with Blood Money, we're, we're just kind of pointing out all the mess up things people do to try to get ahead. But uh, but with Now or Never, uh, if, if you follow the lyrics a little bit, it's almost like, okay, well, what's that line that for yourself that you know you won't cross? And if you haven't figured that out yet, you might do some stuff uh, to kind of, you know, get to where your goal is. But if you don't know what you're comfortable with, you might cross that line and then there's no going back. And then how can you live with yourself? So that's that's kind of one way to take it. Another way, too, is just like sacrifice. Like, what are you willing to sacrifice for your goal? So those are kind of the two themes that we were thinking of when we were writing the song. And um we're just glad it came out the way it did. And uh, we love the video. Shout out to Thomas Crane at Kill Devil Films. He did the possession video as well. Video looks great. That's so cool. Uh, but uh, with, with that song, we really felt we were leveling up our production. And um, it kind of set the new bar for everything going forward for us. Beautiful. Yeah, how important, like, is it to, to have these film clips, you know, before it was kind of you'd when MTV do videos and shit, but now it's kind of like you're releasing a film clip up on YouTube eh, and trying to get those, those views around it as well, have that high quality product and push that. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of, you know, in, in a sense, I, in my mind, I look at it like YouTube is MTV now because when yes. MTV was out, that was really, you either got on MTV or nobody was ever going to know who yep. you were. Now, Everybody has a lot more access to platforms and which I think is a great thing. But in, in, in our heads, whenever we do something, we treat it like, all right, this is back in the day. It's going on YouTube. Like, let's take that seriousness about it. You know, the only difference is we don't have those, you know, $500,000 video budgets that they had back in the day. We did. I promise you, we would do some amazing stuff, but you know, times are a little bit different now with it. No, the quality is great. And tell us, and same as the sound quality. So I want to um, know what's it like um, doing all this, you're doing this all yourself, Stephen, or tell us a little bit about the, that process, man. Yeah, so um, for people who don't know, Carrie and I live in different uh, parts of the United States. Uh, Carrie is in Florida, I'm in Virginia, and then Paul oh. and Mexis, who um, is on base with us, they're in Houston, Texas. So we do a lot of collaboration through the internet. And so um, I have my home studio. Carrie's got his home studio. Uh, we'll collaborate um, through different apps and stuff. Uh, right now we're using Session Wire and stuff like that. So uh, he'll record his guitar tracks. I'll pull his guitar tracks off his computer, stick it into my session. And then um, you know I'll record all my stuff here. Paul sends me his drums. I mix it all up. And uh, we nitpick it till it's perfect. And then we send it out. So we're... Uh, in, in the most real sense, we're, we're doing this out of a bedroom, so we're, we're making it happen. So that'd be a fairly awesome. elaborate creation process. Lots of Zoom fucking chats, I suppose, and Skype or <laughs> whatever else. Oh. Yeah, or how we do this, man. It, it does, uh, the first time we we use Session Wire, trying to figure out how to get, because you know there's so many moving parts. It's, yeah. You've got my studio session, his studio session, yeah. microphones, instruments. Right interfaces you know and they all got to work together across the internet but uh the first time without lag (laughs) yeah yeah exactly (laughs) um it was definitely it it took some work to 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 figure out the right way to do it um 
I think we probably spent, you know, if we had a three time. hour recording session, we probably spent two of those hours trying to figure it out. But once we got it figured out, we're like, okay, that's it. You know? And uh, we're always on the phone with each other going back and forth. We, you know, send the songs back and forth to each other, make our notes on the mix, uh, you know, talk about, Hey, may maybe let's do something different on this bridge or, or whatever it mm -hmm. is. And, you know, it's, we're in communication all the time, so it works real well. Um, probably wouldn't work as well as bands I've been in before where, you know, the band members rarely talk outside of, uh, when they rehearse, but the fact that we are constantly in communication and working on this stuff, it, it's a pretty easy process. Yeah, That's beautiful. Probably... And it's probably started out like that. Yeah. Like, no, we, 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 we started off recording in person together. Uh, I, I lived in Virginia. Yep before I, I came down to Florida. So we would always be in the studio and uh, you know, we had to figure out a way to kind of keep as much of that vibe as possible and doing the webcam thing is it helps with that, you know, because I always felt like we would strike magic when we were there together. And, you know, when you're just sending tracks back and forth, it's not the same as when you're actually on webcam together, you know, it's yeah. as close to being in the room as you can get. Definitely. You're getting that you're getting that organic uh lightning in a bottle, as it were. Uh but, you know, it's like our oh, here's here's this rhythm part, and then here's the melody behind that, or I'm gonna change the drum line and all that. That's that's a whole lot different when you're sending uh, nothing against it, because I, I live in that realm as far as demoing constantly and it's like all right let's try this one let's try this one let's try this one and uh, that's to, that's that's interesting to hear where it's like um you're almost in real time even though you're states apart you can still like all right let's try this and all that that's beautiful that's very cool yeah and and i'm a big believer that a lot of magic happens with mistakes you know um yes. half little accidents one of us could do something that you know the other one's like wait hold on a second what was that you know that was right. pretty cool whereas if you were just sending the tracks i feel like i know for me i would be sitting there trying to get everything as just perfect as possible knowing that you know hey we can't tweak this if i'm sending it out so That's i think it. you missed some of those those happy accidents yes yeah a thousand percent a thousand percent so, so that being said, you are all in different states. What's what's the plan for the band? Like, we'll talk about possession in a minute. But what's the plans for the band? Like, are you going to play some shows, or what are you thinking going forward? Yeah, we. I mean, we kind of have taken a strategic approach since day one, even down to what song we release when we release it. So we we've kind of had a lot of this stuff mapped out in our head of how we would like it to go. And the plan for, for 2023 was always to just get as much content and good content out there as possible, build that fan base, build the demand. And uh, then 2024, we wanted to bring it live. So I, you know, I can't, say much about that yet other than oh, i can say we you know we were on the, the management phone call the other day like two days ago and um we we're talking about the the first show so um that's definitely in the works it, it is it is a little bit of a challenge with everybody being in in different states um you know we we have to fly together to go through rehearsals but uh it it all in a way it, it almost makes it even cooler and, and makes that moment that much more special when you can't Absolutely. just drive five minutes to rehearsal and you've actually got to go through, you know, TSA yeah. and flying and all that. Like it, it makes you appreciate it more. Yeah. Thousand percent. Definitely. That being said, everybody, if you want dark remedy to be playing 2024, you're watching this, you're a dark remedy fan, go bloody buy the music, subscribe to YouTube, stream the fuck out of it on Spotify and you know just play it everywhere buy some bloody merch you've got a website as well yeah yeah darkroomedyband.com thank you for that by the way because all that bloody helps you know what i mean i know you yeah. like every artist out there you'd play music to one person because it's what you do it's what you love and it's if it's inspiring just 
one person, you've done your job. But it's also if you can be able to play all over the place and bring that great music and inspiration and fucking this dark remedy of music to people's ears, then, you know, everyone's got to get along. And, you know, just the little thing of liking and subscribing to a channel, mate. I've got so many, I do it as well, you know, go buying a single or a T-shirt. It all helps the band to be able to put back into recording time. All these little things people don't realise because Spotify, it's great to get those listens, but they're, you know what I mean? They're not doing, they're not paying the fucking recording studio time or helping with the new guitar. It's the fans, the people that are watching this right now, the Dark Remedy fans that are going to help keep the band going forward as well. Yeah, yeah I, I appreciate you saying that. We we talk about this all the time as a band, that the fans really are the X factor. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. We We picked up a whole bunch of new fans based off of, one fan of ours went on a YouTube react live react uh, channel that had like 400,000 subscribers and was just demanding that they do dark remedies possession. They played it. And, and, you know, I'm like, what's going on? Because the, the notifications were going crazy and, yeah. you know, it, I, I'm guilty of it too. You know, I mean, Steven and I are fans first, you know, that's the whole reason we do this is because we love it. And, you know, I would I see it all the time when, you know, some of my favorite bands are like, hey, we'd appreciate it if everybody did this. And I'm like, does does my does my like even matter? You know, you, you start to feel like you're insignificant in the process. But I can tell you firsthand, every single person that just likes, shares, whatever, tells a friend, that is what makes a band. And, and bands can't do it without that. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to piggyback off of that for a second. Every like every song we've done, there's been a crazy little story about some fan that shared us or did something cool and posted a video of, you know, them listening to the song or whatever. And those little interactions l- led to other opportunities for us that we never would have had unless that person did that one little thing. So right. you're out there and you love music and you're, you're, really into a band that you love doing that kind of stuff sets off other chain reactions that you might not see down the line that have a big impact that we can see because we get all the notifications and stuff, but um, everything does matter. uh, Especially at a a band this size when um, it's it's still easy to see uh, all the stuff coming in. So if you're out there and you wonder if we actually are seeing what you're doing, we, we can see it and we appreciate it. So, yeah, we, we try to communicate with the fans as much as possible because I mean, we, we, the, they haven't gotten to see it with this band yet, but people that have seen Steven and I and other bands know that we're the kind of guys that we sit at the merch booth till the venue kicks us out to talk to everybody, you know, uh, we, we, we watch, you know, we, we, we see who is always on there and we take note of it. I mean, even to the point that, you know, a couple of the super fans, if we've done something and I'm like, oh man, so-and-so hasn't liked it yet. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, you're, you're looking for them now. So we see right. you for sure, and we, and we appreciate you. That's the one. And um, I do want to jump into the latest, latest single possession. It's an absolute ripper and it is the latest one, as I just mentioned, tell us all about it guys. So with that one, we, um we definitely wanted to, uh, well, first of all, with every song we do, we want to, top the last one and so um as far as i'm concerned and i I know carrie feels the same way um we we put a ton of work into this one and we were probably the most proud of this song than anything we've done so far uh just the whole package the presentation um we we had a great team work on this with us uh from the art to the video uh the the song came out great as uh i appreciate you saying um but uh but yeah, to dive into the song a little bit, um, you guys probably got uh, the sense that it's it's about AI. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, there, there's some little electronic bleeps and bloops going on. Um, but uh, so with that one, it's it's basically a question of free will and privacy and um, the the concept of Pandora's box, right? You know, you have like this mysterious thing that's going to come in and change like the whole world and once it's out you can't put it back in so all those different kinds of themes is what we're trying to evoke with that song and um and we're just trying to do it in like a fun sexy groovy enticing way um 
but yeah, the, and the response has been phenomenal. So uh, thanks for saying all the good things about that song. We, we really love that song too. Beautiful. Yeah, it's definitely a killer track. And um, I know you can't say much of what's happening next, but uh, another track maybe before the end of the year or we... we yeah, uh, I, I think it's safe to say that we haven't announced anything. We haven't even really... I mean, this would be the first people would have heard this at all. Um, we did say back during Now or Never that this next song, which ended up being Possession, was going to be the last for the year. Uh, we've kind of changed our tune on that, and uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be surprised dropping something here very soon. There you go, cool. everybody. Go along and subscribe, like, follow. Go check out Dark Remedy. Go play all this stuff over on YouTube. Jim, did you want to chuck in anything else, my friend? No, that was beautiful. Uh... Okay, well, awesome. We'll jump over to Kerry <laughs> Stephen. Last words, shout outs, thank yous. Anything else you'd like to add in there? We may have forgotten, my friends. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for everyone that's been on this journey with us. Um, we've met a lot of really cool people through this whole thing uh our, i feel like our world has gotten a little bit bigger since we started doing this band and um everyone we've met has been just super awesome and it's been really positive positive. and you know when you're working really hard on music that's what you hope for you hope for a positive experience all around and that's what we've gotten and we're just so thankful beautiful that's yep. awesome I'll, I'll piggyback off that it's the same i mean we're just we're just two two fans at the end of the day. We're just two kids with a dream and uh, the kind words that we've received and, um, you know, even being requested interviews. It, it just means a lot to us and we appreciate every bit of it. We appreciate what you do for bands like ourselves and the fans, you know, it, it's it's awesome. So stay tuned. It's definitely going to get crazy. Uh, absolutely. Nice bloody legends from jim and myself thank you so very much everybody support dark remedy support ourselves every like and subscribe helps support what you love support the scene cheers guys thank you so much oi you're tuned in to dry that aussie metal guy so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any of his sick content and remember stay brutal you legend